Hey fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Hey, where are you going? Champ? Slugger? Hey, cowboy? Where are you going? Where are you going? I'm going out! Hey everybody, it's Caleb here, just cruising down I-65 North, and if you've been watching my show for any amount of time, you know that I say three things whenever I start this show. Speech isn't violence, tolerance isn't love, and disagreement isn't hate. Now, I've said these things at the start of my show for a long time now. They've kind of become the motto of the show, but I've had people kind of ask me to elaborate on those things and give an explanation of exactly why I say that at the beginning of every broadcast. So I decided today that I'm going to do a little more elaboration on the third maxim that I always state at the beginning of the show, which is disagreement is a hate. Now this one is incredibly important. I don't think that you could point to any one of these three things and say that, okay, this one is by far the most important because they're all pretty darn important. But this one I think is important for us as a culture right now. They're all eternally true, but this one specifically is something that our society really, really needs to hear. Because there has been a very effective lie that has been perpetrated throughout our society that disagreement is hate. That if you disagree with someone, if you don't like their political stances, if you don't like their religion, if you think that they are wrong in something, it must be because you hate them. But this thing has two meanings. First of all, we need to always remember that just because we disagree with someone, it does not mean we have to hate them. And that protects us from sort of piling up resentment and hatred in our own hearts towards people just because we may disagree. But it's always wise to not assume that the other person hates us just because they happen to have a disagreement with us. And so we have to remember that from both sides, both that it's not wise for us to assume that someone hates us, and also we don't need to use our disagreement as a rationale for hating another person. And the reason that this is so important is because we see this all the time, and sometimes people just say it outright. They just come out and say that. Especially if you're somebody that has kind of conservative, libertarian leanings, it happens on both sides, and I understand that, but it seems very prevalent that if you have those kind of beliefs, that people, especially on the left, because I think it's politically effective, as far as the arguments goes for, for rallying people to your side, they just say that you must hate people if you have a disagreement with them. A great example of this is, because I am a small government person, and I believe that big government actually harms the people that it claims to help, I tend to not really like things like welfare spending. And usually when I state this, the automatic response to whatever welfare program I'm against, be it social security or universal medicine, it's always, oh, you must hate poor people. Well, no, I don't hate poor people. I think that this program is hurting poor people and keeping them in their poverty. But I'm not gonna go into the details of that and explain all that, because it's really beyond the scope of what we're talking about here today. I'm just using that as an example that you don't hate people just because you have a disagreement with them. And I think that this is something that actually is not just a political problem, that it is a lie directly from hell itself. And I know that that's a very bold statement, but the reason I'm saying that there is quite a bit of rationale behind this. Look at the Bible. It is filled with narratives of people that did things that they shouldn't have and needed human beings to come and correct them and point out their flaws. Because as human beings, we're imperfect and we have blind spots. I know that's an uncomfortable truth, but it's true. And because of that, occasionally, we need other people to step in and point out what we are doing wrong. And we could look at any of our Bible heroes, and, and part of the reason I love the Bible is because it does portray its heroes as flawed individuals that need correction. We could look at Paul, we could look at Peter, we could look at Abraham or David. They had people come to them when they were doing something that God wouldn't approve of, and most of the time they didn't even realize they were doing it. They thought they were doing the right thing, and they had someone come along and correct their error to point out to them, no, what you're doing is not okay. And because of that, they took it seriously, 
and they contemplated it and they changed their lives as a result to make themselves more acceptable to God. You see, this is why I say it's a lie directly from hell, because if you assume that the only reason a person would come to correct you or that a person would have a disagreement with you is because you hate them, well, the gospel would be impossible to spread them. Because when you look at the gospel, it shows that every person is wrong. Every person has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and we all have these blind spots that we need other people to come and to show us. But if the devil can make you believe that a loving Christian that comes to you in the spirit of wanting to help you actually hates you, and that him pointing out that you have something that you're incorrect on or that you have a disagreement with him about, that that comes to the point of hatred, that will keep the gospel of Christ spreading real fast. But going into all the details and all the arguments really isn't the point. The point is it's always better to assume that the person doesn't hate you unless you have a really, really good reason for believing that that is the case. Because the world needs to understand and know that disagreement isn't hate. And I believe that if we all recognize that and lived by that and understood that just because someone is our political opponent doesn't mean that they hate us and want to ruin our lives, I think that would go a long way in healing the political divides in this country right now. Ultimately, we always have to remember that even if our opponents and our political adversaries do not extend that same courtesy to us, even if they don't assume that we don't hate them just because we disagree, we always have to live up to the mantra in our own lives that even if they don't extend that courtesy to us, that disagreement is not hate. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.